And here is how words are constructed by using prepositions in order to be able to connect to nouns. Adjectives. An adjective is a word used to describe a noun, to give it a particular property or quality. For example, a stupid man, a clever woman. The distinctive feature about adjectives in Egyptian is that they follow their nouns. So here's an example. By taking the word for man located on the left, we simply add an adjective which actually follows the word man. This word added is an adjective for bin, evil, which we've seen before. And this translates as the evil man, or literally as man this evil. But you don't have to concern yourself with this type of literal translation. It's simply to show you how this is done. The female is the same principle. By adding the adjective, bin, but now the bin becomes bint. The adjective follows the female and is translated as the evil woman, also as well as literally woman, this evil. Something you should notice as well is that the adjectives agree with their nouns. So for example, in the female part, with the woman and its adjective follows, you have both T's where you don't have them in the male or the masculine one. So what this shows us is that the female is feminine and the adjective evil has to follow the feminine word and thus the T is added in order to show that it agrees. This is how Egyptian works in regards to adjectives. Also notice that the evil man, the evil woman, the word the is not actually written down, but implied as indicated before. So don't try to read it or find the word. It's simply added in order to make reading a lot easier. Another word is this, which behaves in the similar manner. This adjective, for example, that you see here is the word this, but this is a masculine word pronounced pun or transliterated as pun. This word is the feminine counterpart, pronounced ten, which is feminine for this. So here's an example of the way this adjective works. The pin and tin follow their noun and agree with it. Here is the word goose, which was introduced to us in the beginning of the lesson. Goose is a masculine word, so this means that we would have to add the word ten, which is the masculine form of this. This word then transliterates as suru pin, this goose. The word goose is masculine, and the adjective always follows its noun. A masculine word therefore needs a masculine adjective, which is the word pun. And this is how adjectives work. Some vocabulary for you to use or learn. Pipish. This is a foreleg of an ox used in offerings. The foreleg is what's indicated as well in the Senbi inscription, showing him holding the foreleg. This is the word enka'in, that's a transliteration for the ka'ab, usually used in prayers or sacred inscriptions. This is the word ma'e'ru, the justified. This appears quite often frequently. The word below it, where it shows or, and then the word below, is an alternative writing. My haru is a word that is constantly used throughout inscriptions on monuments, in papyrus texts. It's constantly seen. To relate to the word my haru, we would use the modern day equivalent of amen when completing a prayer. The next word, of course, which you've seen before, is sendi, transliterated, which actually is a pronoun, a name of the official. Here is an example of a scene. To give you the chance to be able to see how this works and how inscriptions on monuments appear as opposed to simply reading the scripts on the computer, here it shows you an actual replica of an inscription. 
This is an inscription of fishing and fowling scene from the tomb of Sendi. The hieroglyphs have been edited to fit the content for this lesson. The scene is studied with its original inscriptions. Now, let us break this down. By looking at this, we see that there is some spearing of fish and, of course, of throwing a boomerang at birds. Fishing and fowling scene from the tune of Sendi at Mare. Two things to remember. The words for bird and fish are given in an abbreviated form rather than being written out fully. They are still the same two words in the plural. And two, my huru, the justified, has now been given in three different writings. Such variations in the spelling of words will be explained in the next lesson. Here is the word apadu, a word recognized pre in the previous lessons. It's shorter and simpler, using only the determinative for duck and, of course, the three strokes indicating plural. In, which is the preposition for by. My haru, explained before, the word for justify. Here written in two different forms. Emea, throwing. Sendi, the name of the official whose inscription here is depicted. R, which is the mouth sign, but also indicates the preposition at or towards. The fish. Here we have a determinative for a fish with the three plural stroke signs. This is transliterated as remu. Much of the word is missing to indicate plural, such as the quail. So we indicate, as we described before, the u within brackets to show that it is omitted, but it is part of the word. Finally, Stut. This is the word for spearing, which you can see as well above the inscription surrounded in blue. And this is how you read the inscriptions on the monuments. This is a more of a difficult type of reading, but as we go along in the lessons, you'll be able to familiarize yourself more with the type of writing, and eventually it becomes easier as the lessons go on. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson one. If you are interested, Please stay tuned for Lesson 2.